Okay, school analogy. How long do you join college for? The guys in my crew, don't answer it. How long do you join, uh, let's just show of hands, anybody, how long do you join college for? Until you get your degree. Okay, let me read it. How long can you enroll college for? Per semester. I don't care, I've always heard people say three years, four years, six years, semester is all you get. It's impossible for you to enroll for more. Why? I'm sorry? Well, somebody, somebody can pay for or have uh, financing for a year, theoretically, but why is it a semester? It's, there's prerequisites that is clearly dictated that can start on this date, but you know what? For all the people that go to college in the world, they can complete it by this date. Why? There's a certain rules of standards in teaching that they're going to distribute this curriculum that has been tested over and over again based upon when they show up to class. No one's gonna pass the semester by coming in when they feel like coming in. Does that make sense? I'm not saying what's right, I'm saying this is what they're used to already, so let's kind of play the game a little bit. In a math class syllabus, uh, time is established to complete it, so if you start in September, wh when are you usually gonna get your, your testing, or when are you gonna get the ending? December, right? It's, it's already inserted in there. If I don't show up to class, something's gonna happen. It's literally a waste of money at that time. That's why the parents are there. Parents are gonna make sure the money was worth the value or take them right out. Uh, everyone takes a test at the midterm, not just who you think is ready. In the martial arts, you're not ready. You're ready, you're not ready, you're ready. But if they didn't even know what the prerequisites clearly were, how did they know that they were preparing properly for it? Everybody understand? All right. <clears throat> student evaluations review the skills of the instructor and the curriculum in a given period. So for all the people who want to have a staff member, or let's, let's make it more clear, a staff instructor, how do you gauge if that instructor is good? Based upon all the students taking a test, because not as a performer, but as an instructor, how good the students are is how good the instructor is. Does that make sense? If they don't allow everybody to test, and they only let this person, and th they're preloading it to make them look good artificially. Does that make sense? So let's pretend that you're not the only instructor in your school and somebody else is teaching. And you see 20 people join as a white belt all in the same month. And when the first testing comes in, only 10 are there. Are 10 there because they wanted to hide the other 10 and preload it? So therefore, wow, look, all my guys who tested were great. Yeah, but you hid the other 10. Or do you literally like a midterm or a final? Everybody has to take the midterm and final, okay? That's just to show how good your staff instructor is so that you can make the adjustments. Or maybe you're the guy. You gotta see how, where, where you're missing it. Uh, is there too much material? So this goes back into evaluating your instructors, whether that instructor is you. Challenge that over time to be better and better staff development because the whole point is when you have somebody else doing it, you could find out where your curriculum is. It might on paper look like a lot of curriculum, but some of it is just warm up, it's just new stuff. There's like a lot of like words, but it's really very, very easy to learn. And it's how your instructor delivers it. So on the left, what do you see? Typical martial arts school, right? Typical, okay, on the right. What do you think of when you see the one on the right? Yeah, no one's thinking elementary school though. Right? It's like, it's serious now, right? Actually, when, when, uh, when we Googled it, we looked up like Ivy League. So there's a certain look to it, but it's not just a look, right? It's, it's what gets distributed once you're in there. And there's a certain amount of, uh, hey, he's a student, he's a certain belt out of this school, how much respect comes out of having that rank, right? So nothing wrong with it, but you know, you could be like the community college versus the Ivy League. There's a, there's a difference to it. So we want to make sure that when the students on the left, if the students are choosing when they feel like training, you're going to think of the one on the left. If you're over here on the right, students are given mandatory schedules here. The first day of school, bam. You got to read that, you got to do this, and the first test is here, and then tell them why, because you know more than them. If you tested it enough times, you know. Right? How long does it take for you to get a black belt? Well, you know, it's up to you and how hard you work. And the, I understand that. I completely agree. But give them a roadmap. I'm, okay, you know what? 
I may not know exactly how long it'll take for you to get your black belt, but to be able to get your first stripes, tell them that. Because isn't that the real first goal that they're supposed to concentrate on? So let's redirect them into really the things that we can control, which is the uh, delivery of curriculum and the way that we, they, they will accept it because our whole goal is for them to be coachable. The reason I keep saying make them coachable from the beginning is because they're going to be our coaches. If this is the way they learn it from the beginning, this is the way they're gonna deliver it. So when you say, well, how do I get staff development? The day they walked in through the door, and the way they were introduced to it is the way that the only way that they're going to teach it because our problem is we only teach the way we learned it too. So let's break that cycle. Testing days are optional. Oh, I'm busy, I can't do this. Uh, not, not enough people are ready, let's postpone it one more month. Maybe that happens for the people that do group testings. Everyone is subject to midterms and finals. <laughs> it is what it is. If you miss it, you miss it. On the left, course completion is, well, again, what's your course? Is the course literally, it, your course could be a six week course. It could be a six month course. We don't have to get crazy. Course completion is assured by the process. The process says, through all the people that have come through our doors, because I think, there, I think it's safe to say, if some of you have been around teaching in your schools long enough, you've literally had hundreds, if not thousands of people, at least just walk through your door. What process by data collection are you taking to ensure the process is better the next time around? Okay, <clears throat> this is what I was talking about evaluations. I don't call it testings, by the way, I call them evaluations because when you say testings to students, they freak out a little bit. When you say evaluation, they just wanna know where they're at because it's a measurable result. I just wanna know where they're at. So in my program, okay, uh, in the evaluation, in a level one, okay, their boxing was like this, their knees like this, but their cardio conditioning, their footwork agility was here. Okay, I don't fail them, I just wanna know where they're at. But you know what, more importantly, they gotta know where they're at, they gotta know what to improve, and then they can keep going. But as long as something happened different than their first day, so if on day one, day one, that your intro was almost considered an evaluation or what I consider a pre-evaluation, they can't wait till one month, two months, three months, six months later to find out where did they go. And if something changed, if there was something that was tested later on that was part of the first one, they remember that it was different. And they have something written that shows that it was different. But if your intro had nothing to do and didn't look like your test or evaluation, how, do, how can they tell? Day one had nothing to do with day whatever. Does everybody understand that? I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying reflect on how, how you may introduce it to your student and how you may wanna try and get measurable results so that they understand that they're getting better. So on the left, we cherry pick our students. This guy's gonna test. You know what? You're gonna test, you're gonna test, you're gonna test, but not you too. How motivated are you now to try more? Because in the martial arts, it's, it's great to think we get all these strong-willed, minded, we, it's not true. Sometimes we get the weakest guys walking in because they need it. So if we already knocked them, said you're not ready, you can't do this. I just want to evaluate you. Can you just show up to an evaluation? Because it's gonna be a bell curve. You know what I mean by a bell curve? That means 10% over here, whew, off the chart. 10% over here, yeah, they're gonna need work. The rest will be right on track. If you test there, it's just gonna happen. If I took everybody over in this whole room and we did some sort of testing of some sort, some people will be really, really good off the chart. Some will be like, eh, maybe not so great. Everybody else will be pretty expected. Well, if you have that bell curve, you're doing everything right. If you had everyone way over here, you cheated somehow. I don't care what you say, you cheated. You hid somebody or you preloaded the test to make it look artificially uh, uh, just perfect. It's not how the world works. So if we, uh, if we cherry pick the results for, uh, in students, students will quit that weren't actually a part of it. At least they're getting engaged. We're evaluating instructor performance, so when I say an evaluation, my instructors know. They're sweating out more than anybody else how the students are gonna perform. And then third, we're evaluating curriculum performance. So if the, everything the instructor's doing, their attendance is there, the instructors are on top of them, and, they're, and in previous testings or evaluations, everyone's done well. But all of a sudden, now maybe there's something with the curriculum. Maybe they're, without you knowing it, you guys know what I'm talking about, they start changing stuff. They add a little bit more. Because they might be bored as an instructor. Oh, I keep teaching this beginner technique. So I just want to switch it out. For they might have only seen it once or twice. You've done it for like 20 years. So don't start switching it to make it better for you. You gotta still do it consistently for them. 
Okay, on the right, here's the bell curve I was talking about. Everyone needs to be evaluated, wherever they are, because most people, just by knowing where they are, I started on the same day, he started on the same day, same instructor, this guy's doing great, okay, that's gonna be a motivator. But not even being picked, right? It's, it's about being benched. Nobody gets benched. Everybody has equal opportunity. You can't uh, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, and is your process based on the left or the right? That's for you to choose. Are you, are you, choose, are, are you cherry picking everything or the bell curve? Okay, the quick task, again, it's really small, but anybody who wants the information, uh, I'll give it to you. Just ask yourself, how long does it take to get whatever rank? If it's gonna be a gray rank, if it's gonna be a stripe or whatever, just don't do something where it like, takes 18 months. Pick something where it's small appetizing bites. So if that means I'm not gonna do a one year program, I'm gonna do a six month program because my program is really a six month program, what's wrong with that? What are you scared of? If it's done right, right? It's not like you have to lock them in for the year. So if they were really pumped and you gave them what they needed, it doesn't matter if it was six months and then they can continue on. Does it make sense? So uh, my suggestion is to create your actual program for your school and then price it according to that and make it on a level that everybody can be able to do for success and then let them continue because otherwise if you make it really crazy, they're gonna be like, well, why would I do the next program? It's just gonna be even crazier. There's gonna be more stuff. They expect all these things and we're the crazy ones because no one who took class with me were, you know, is still training too. That's only good for our imagination but not for their confidence not for their goals, not for anything else. Inform the students, this is kind of a, um, a recap. Inform your students of the goals and the expectations when you get there, whether it's on your sites, whether it's on your handouts, whether it's on your links. So as an example, during enrollment, recommend them to a basic low, uh, program. And the fact that your school has a minimum performance requirements, so we talked about that before. I'm going all the way down just to be able to get to by the time it's time for them to graduate, right? Don't leave them in the same program. It's like if they, if they were able to get into your second program and they had two months left in their original contract, don't let it ride for two more months. But here's the thing. If they originally joined for a program, the one after that still has to be another program with definable performances and expectations. And then price it accordingly. I don't care if it's another one year or if it's a 36, it doesn't matter, but let them understand by that time, hey, you're gonna need a certain amount of gear, or testings, testings here, or there's contact sparring, or non-contact, let them know. Because they're like, oh, I, did, I joined for 36 months and I had no idea. So they'll write it out and they're gonna be like, they're not even gonna be cheerleaders. Because who, who, you know, there's not a lot of referrals at that stage. There's a lot of referrals at, at white belt stage, but sometimes there's not a lot at blue, or purple, right? So you gotta understand, well, why are they in, not excited anymore? This should be the time that they're getting the really cool stuff, but there's less referrals by that individual student. How does that make sense? Um, so I'll actually go into the next part here. So upgrade programs, because I'm gonna be a little bit short on time. The whole thing that, if I could summarize it, as far as what's going on, as far as the upgrade is concerned, is it goes back to what was their expectation. If there was a female in a generic sports bra and karate pants, and it looked like nothing, well, let's, not, let's say karate pants, let's say it was just like, whatever, uh, compression shorts, compression shorts and a, and a sports bra and then you put them in a full-blown kind of like martial arts program with belts, there's a disconnect there. Does that make sense to everybody? And I see it all the time. I'll be like, all right, well, this is our kickboxing program, and it looks like cardio, and you go in there, and it's not cardio. Or let's reverse it. Let's say it's like, oh, it's gonna be this kind of program, and it's training this and that, and you can't substantiate it from the program that they go into. So, you know, kind of test yourself. Get somebody, maybe get your brother, your sister, somebody else look at the website and say, tell me everything you think about the program by looking at this. See how on target they are or not. Check yourself. And then ask them, hey, if I asked you to do this, 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 would you still do it? Great, what's the value of that program? Because Sensei was right. Because if it was a $50 kickboxing program, you're gonna die because nobody wants to renew. There's no, there's no um, loyalty because there's no uniform. And if there's no progressive ranking, they don't know if they're doing better. All of those things are words until we put that into practice. So let's put into practice what all of those things to tie into. For example, in, in, in my program, the black belt is called a coach because the thing is, there's a lot of self-development going on up to black belt. It's no black belt in Muay Thai, so I, I call it a coach. Well, by definition, right, it's all about word presentation. As a coach, you, j you just became a coach, so now you're gonna quit. No, you become a coach, so now you know you're gonna get engaged with other people. You're gonna be a leader. It's, you know, there's ranks and there's titles. 
So we have to start creating some of those things for our guys because not every black belt is an instructor because they weren't trained to be an instructor. So let's not confuse that. But if we have a, a modeling system for our curriculum that's already built in, you already had an assistant program. Why, you, technically, you didn't need an assistant program. It was already built in. And everybody has the opportunity to be able to do something like that within their, within their own school and program. If you guys need any help, just call me. I'll help you out with something like that. Um, throw some ideas against the wall, and I'll be able to sh uh, talk about things that I personally do within my school and see if it works within yours.